The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'd like to talk about some do-it-yourself hardware that I've recently acquired in my collection. And this vintage stuff is pretty interesting. It's stuff I'd, I've never seen before. I had two items in the same week, and so it's pretty neat. Uh, there's some very talented people uh, that play games, and they decide, you know what? I want to make my own hardware. And sometimes you see some wonderful things. Other things you see, you scratch your head. Maybe you've came across some things yourself. I have two things today I've never came across before. First one is an electronic horse race game using a, it looks like a, like a project box of some type. And using some micro switches and <laughs> it's just some, some lights and stuff. I'm going to try to get this thing to work. And so that's the first thing. Pretty awesome. It's powered by a 9 volt battery. <laughs> that's interesting. Second piece of hardware uh, comes from Sean Stromera of New Jersey, and uh, he sent me this. And at first glance, it looks like, you know, your Star Raiders Atari 2600 pad. But no, it's been adapted, and it has a ending like this, which I think is for the 5200. And it has some buttons on top that have been added. And on the side there, a 9-pin. And so I think this is a 2600 adapter for the 5200 that someone used a Star Raiders controller for and then modified it inside. Probably using the parts of a 5200 controller. So let's check this out and let's see if they work. So here it is. Someone's homemade electronic horse race game. You know, they might have got the ideas from, uh, you know, like an electronics magazine. You know, if anybody knows the origins of uh, this in a magazine, or or if there's others like this, let me know. You know, I'm sure I'm sure they found it from somewhere, or they made it themselves. I don't know. I've never seen anything like this. Pretty cool. Either way, it's old. It's cool. Um, they added a switch on that side to turn it on. You turn it on, connected to a nine volt battery, and from from what I've played, and again. Uh, it's pretty interesting because it the the it'll start doing this. It'll start blinking, and so I I essentially it's a timing with pressing one or two buttons. Player one and player two would press these buttons in in the right order to move their dots around this racetrack, and the first one to finish wins. And that's essentially what I think the game is. I I had a hard time playing it. I could try showing you. But uh, what I'll do is I'll try doing one one player. So you press reset, and then I see this. I think that you're waiting for it to start. And if I remember correctly, the lights will dim. Yep, and now it'll go. So so see, I made progress. But if you mess up, you'll go back. But yeah, so essentially you press these buttons and the lights will go around. I think that's how you play it. If anybody knows differently, let me know. Again, I'm just, <laughs> there isn't any instructions with this thing. It's just some homemade horse racing game. And so it's pretty interesting. You know, I tried resetting it a couple times. Um, and try, I've, I've had a light get to the fourth or fifth. Uh, s s section so I, I know that there is no way of doing it I just it's it's pretty interesting so yep so yeah if you mess up it goes back so that's essentially I think how you play it Really interesting, uh, <laughs> it's just really bizarre, and I had to show it on my channel, and I thank you Josh Byerly for uh, picking this up for me. Alright, so here we go, here's a standard Star Raiders video touchpad, and this is, uh, looks like it's not never been used, and it comes with an overlay, and this really essentially was made for one game, it's crazy that they made a controller for that, but it was a complicated game, very cool. And here on the right side is a standard 5200 controller. 
And important to note, the top three buttons are start, pause, and reset. And again, uh, this controller has the nine pin. This has uh, the 5200 input, which is different. And so someone essentially hacked a Star Raiders controller pad and modified it so that it would work with the 5200. Now, the insides, I, I, I kind of don't want to open it up yet. I want to play with it. And, uh, you know, because I don't want to damage this. This is this is pretty interesting. I've, I've collected a long time. I've never seen this done. I'm sure it's, <laughs> it's not cost effective. But, you know, what's really cool is that's where you put your 2600 controller. Very cool. And my prediction is that these top, top three buttons start, pause, and reset. And I'm going to test that on a 5200 to confirm that with a 2600 controller. And uh, let's go check it out. All right. So I have this adapter that I think it is. This 5200 to 2600 controller adapter hooked up to my Atari 5200 console 2 port with the multi-cart. And uh, I'm going to try a couple games out. And again, uh, I'm using a standard 2600 controller. And let's see if it works. Well, I kind of ran into a problem. And I thought for sure this is going to work. And it half works. And I actually could use your help figuring this out. So I have it plugged in. And I want to show on camera. I'm using a standard 2600 controller. And I've tested about 12 different controllers. I've tested a Genesis controller. I've tested a um, several different third-party 2600 controllers. I've tried Odyssey 2. I've tried ColecoVision. I've tried everything. And essentially what happens is I get it to half work. And so I just can't get... Um, the joystick to work. I, a couple different controllers. I got the fire button. So long story short, this is calibrated for a specific controller and I don't have it. I didn't try a Master System controller, but um, what it, 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 it does a couple different things. So I'll try this. You know, I'm showing Pac-Man here and on the standard 2600 controller, yep, it moves. But it's opposite. It's opposite control. I don't know what's going on. Like it's just it doesn't control right. And so I don't know what I'm controlling it a little bit. So I'm getting some control, but not the right control. So obviously this either this you know this is homemade. It could be so I am controlling it, as you can see, but it's just it's way messed up. <laughs> so yeah, I mean it's it's interesting. And it could be just made wrong. I mean, the thing is, this is just, this is a homemade product and it could be just defective or, I don't know, but it's it's really interesting. I just, it's not responding the way it should. So either I have the wrong controller, this is customized for a specific controller, I have no idea. I'd love to hear back from you folks to think, what do you think it could be? And uh, yeah, so womp womp. This one doesn't work, but it's still a cool thing to have in the collection. So there you have it. That is pretty strange. Uh, both items, and again, uh, the first item I forgot to mention, and I want to thank Chelsea Beck for delivering it to me. So Josh is uh, far away, and so I was happy to receive that. Thank you, Chelsea. And uh, just some crazy things you know, that people come up with. What are some things that you've seen along the way uh, controllers or hardware or adapters that people have made. Um, I'd love to hear about your stories or, or tell me what you've seen. I love seeing this stuff, you know, this homebrew stuff, homebrew hardware. And it's really neat to see what people come up with. There's a lot of smart people out there that uh, just take it takes things to the next level. They don't wait for a company to make them. They, they use off-the-shelf parts and make it themselves. So, I'm really excited to uh, do weird stuff like this. I was intrigued by these items and thought I'd smash them into one video. Thank you so much for people around the world to continue to watch me. I'm still doing three videos a week. My hat's off to people. You're awesome and beautiful. This is the Immortal John Hancock. Take care.